Hey Maker, welcome to the Snapseed Editing for Product Photography 6 video series. This is video 3. This is a 6 part video series and you can easily access all the videos by clicking the link up here or by grabbing it in the description below. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole, and I am a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product based business. In this video, video three, you are going to learn all about non-destructive editing and edit stacks. Non-destructive editing allows you to make changes to an image without actually overriding the image's original data. This is useful in case you ever need to revert the image back to the original. Because non-destructive editing doesn't remove data from the image, the image quality doesn't degrade when you make edits. Now, edit stacks, they're just like layers that you'll see in a pro editing software. Let's take a look at how edit stacks work. So to access the edits you've made to a photo, you're gonna go to the top right-hand corner where you see the little squares that look stacked with almost like that undo arrow. When you click on that, you're gonna have the option to undo an edit, redo an edit, revert the entire image back to its original photo, or you can click view edits. If we click into view edits, it's gonna pull up all the edits that I made to this photo. So if I click on the original, this was the original image that was taken. I cropped the photo and then I did a curves adjustment to it. And then I made a little adjustment to the white balance. So when an edit is highlighted blue like that, you can click it again, and you're gonna see an option to adjust the sliders an option to selectively brush the edit onto the photo, which means that you could add the edit to just a portion of the photo, or you have the option to delete the edit. So if I go into the sliders, it's going to pull up that white balance tool again, and it's going to allow me to make adjustments. So check mark. Now, one thing I do want to show you that's super cool, we're going to tap that curves edit. And we're going to tap it again to pull up the sliders. The sliders will allow you to, it takes you right back into the tool so you can make any adjustments you want. But I want to look at this brush option. Because if you look at the photo, you'll notice that because my hands are closer to the window, closer to the light source, that my hands are actually a little more exposed than my, my face is. So I want to go in here and I want to play and see if I can selectively edit that curves by adjusting like the opacity, meaning how much of the edit is actually applied to just my hand. So I'm going to tap the square with the brush. Now that's going to revert back to what it looked like prior to. So at the bottom, you'll notice that it says 100 and I can do an arrow that goes down to 75, 50, 25, and zero. So zero is going to be our eraser. 25 is going to only apply a portion of the opacity. And as we go up higher, that would be 100% of the edit. So if we turn the little eyeball on to allow us to see our edits, I want to 100% apply that curve edit I made to the entire image. Okay, this is what you saw before. If I turn the eyeball off, you're seeing that entire edit there. But as I mentioned, my hands are a little more exposed than my face is. So if I turn that eyeball on again, and let's try to just go down to 75. What I'm going to do is I'm going to brush over my arm and my hand. And you'll see that the, the pink is just a little lighter. Trying to be very careful, just getting my fingers, all of that. 
Let's go over here. I'm brushing on my other hand now. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to tap the eye again. And that's a little better, but I almost feel like maybe it's just a difference in maybe the tint. Like maybe we need a little more pink on the hand. So let me hit a check mark and say okay to this one. And I'm actually going to back out of this and go back into tools. And I'm going to do a separate white balance solely for the tint. And I'm going to show you why here. So I'm going to move to tint. I'm going to focus solely on my hands because that's what I want to make more pink. Let's go to a 10 here. So I'm going to adjust the tint to a plus 10. Again, solely focusing on the pinkness of my hands. Hit that check mark. I'm going to go back up to the stacks button at top. Hit view edits. And you'll see now I have two white balances. This first one is for temperature. And the second one is for that tint. Okay, there's a reason I'm keeping those separate. The reason behind that is I want to apply that temperature adjustment to the entire photo. So I don't want to go in and selectively brush that. So I'm going to go into this top white balance where we made tint adjustments. I'm going to tap it again, and I'm going to hit that square brush. Now, right now, that reverted back just to the temperature adjustment. There's all, That's the only thing that's happening here. So now I need to actually apply that tint adjustment to my hands. And I want to apply it at 100%, which you'll see at the bottom there. So I'm going to turn that eyeball on. And remember, if you zoom in, you're going to get less of a spread. So you're going to have more control over the spread. And we're just focusing on the hands. I can go down to a zero and like erase portions I may not want. The spread was probably pretty big. Go back to 100. Okay, let's go over to our other hand. Again, zooming in, we'll get you a tighter line or a sharper line without as much spread or blur. Okay, let's back out on oh, the tip. So now I've just applied 100% of that tint edit only to my hands. If I turn the eyeball off, my hands are going to match my face a little bit more as far as the color of my skin goes. So I'm going to hit that check mark. If I jump down to that white balance there, you'll see the difference. So this is without the tint applied to my hands, and this is with the tent applied to my hands. So just look at that difference. It's awesome, right? Okay, so that's kind of how you use and go in and you can do selective brushing edits to prior edits. You can adjust prior edits. You can delete prior edits. All of that can be done in here. Now, we're gonna back out of this by clicking that arrow in the top left-hand corner. And I want to show you two ways that you can essentially create like a Lightroom preset or a Photoshop action inside of Snapseed. It's called Looks. So if you tap Looks and you hit that plus button, you can create a new look with the edits that you just made. Now, because of the way that I am screen sharing here, I can't actually do it or it messes up my recording. So all you do is hit the plus sign and you name it. Okay, now I went ahead and I created a look for all the edits that we just did. So what we're going to do is go to the top left and we're going to click open. And we're going to choose another photo that I took with the same exposure. And I'm going to select looks in the bottom left hand corner. And then I'm going to tap the look that I just made. This is going to allow me to kind of batch edit. Now, you will notice that it did not crop the photo. And it only made like exposure adjustments in certain areas of the image. So the downside to looks is that the crop tool, the rotate tool, 
the perspective tool, the selective tool, and the healing tool do not transfer over. There's a workaround for this though. So I'm gonna open back up the image that I made all the edits to, and we're gonna go into the edit stacks, top right, and we're gonna click view edits. So here's all the edits that we have. If I go to those three little dots in the top right-hand corner and click those, see where it says copy? We're going to tap that copy button. We're gonna back out with the arrow in the top left-hand corner, and we're gonna go back to open, and we're gonna choose that image that we were just trying to apply the look to again. So here's our, our fresh image with no edits to it. We're gonna go into the edit stack. We're gonna click view edits, and you'll notice that there are none. If we go to that top right-hand corner though and press those three little dots, see that insert button? We're gonna insert all the edits from our prior photo. Now you'll notice that the crop, the crop's okay. When I'm shooting models though, I tend to like to have an aspect, an element of their face. Typically it's always best to cut out the eyes because eyes grab attention. That's the first thing we're gonna look at in a photo. But if you can just have like the mouth in there, something like that, it really just solidifies that human element. So this can stand as it is. We like it. I'm gonna back out. I'm gonna save the photo, but I'm gonna go back into that edit stack, view edits, and I'm gonna hit that crop button, select it again, hit the slider, and I'm actually going to move this up just a little bit so that you can see my wonderful ha 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 smile. Hit that check mark, reapply the rest of the edits, and we're good to go. In video number four, I'm going to show you how to use Snapseed to resize your product photos to meet Etsy's recommendation. Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own high-quality product photos. See you next time.